good revenge movie works. And I felt that if I could find a really simple, mythic, clear tale that this audience could relate to and understand, then I could indulge in uh, the material world and the inner and religious and mythological world more than if the story was complex. got me fascinated was the rich mythology and poetry. You are still a beast, cloaked in man flesh. Speak, witch, so be it, slave! Before I really knew that I wanted to make a Viking movie and I just started to learn about Vikings in general, I just didn't understand how sophisticated the culture was. It's a very mysterious culture, and I think that fascinates people. I knew that there could be something beyond just jacked guys cutting each other up with swords. I like going into the past is to try to like get inside people's minds who think differently than me and then realize I could see how that makes sense. He basically became a scholar. I don't do anything that I am not insanely passionate about because there's just not time in life for it and it's so hard to make a film anyway. Your sheep's clothing does not disguise you, Northman. The authenticity of the project is something that's very key to the way that Rob works. That's down to every detail, the sets, the wardrobe, the costumes, the jewelry, the weapons. My North Star becomes the historical research. Me and all my collaborators and all the actors know that the goal is this impossible idea of accuracy. So it aligns everybody and makes us united. The challenge is the lack of written information. It's still an oral tradition at the period that this movie is set at, early 10th century. There's always question marks. I try to go with what academia's overall consensus tends to be about a certain thing. Everything had to be basically approved by a scholar. I was incredibly fortunate that Xion, the Icelandic novelist and poet, uh, wanted to work with me. I mean, he, I don't use this word lightly. He's a genius, uh, you, you know. Uh, not to say that this thing we created together is genius, but he is one. <clears throat> the first treatment that I sent Alex, they went, uh, it began in Denmark and then and then uh, as a Viking raider, as a, as a berserker, Ulf Jethnar, he went to Scotland. And Alex said, oh, we've seen like raiding on the British Isles a lot. Like, why don't they go to the land of Rus or modern day Ukraine? and you didn't have to force me. I love Ukrainian uh, folk culture, so I was incredibly happy that he suggested that. <laughs> Tommy Dunn made our weapons. Craig, the production designer, Linda Muir, the costume designer, um, they know how I work. And, uh, and, and uh, everyone else didn't. And th this idea that don't, don't, no, don't look at pictures of Viking swords and then design a cool one with a dragon on it. Just make me that sword. Or make me like that sword hilt with that blade. Maybe that pommel. But that's it. It's like just do the research. And it was really, it was actually hard for people to wrap their minds around at first. Every, you know, everyone got there and everyone enjoyed it. But Tommy was the first new person who was like, you want me to make museum replicas? Got it. And he and he made, I mean, really incredibly beautiful things. I mean, there's only like one helmet from our period that's been discovered. So you base the helmets around that based on helmets on either side of it. The research and certainly the fabrications was really fun and, and difficult. Normally we have small pieces like this. And they are literally pieces. There is no there's not one complete garment. Most of what we know about Viking clothing comes from burials. Each of the family members would be wearing garments that were embroidered with these various motifs, straight lines, wavy lines, circles, squares, all had different meanings. So the lines are very particular, and we see this in, in our research. Even though your brother stole my eyes, I see you. 
Bjork did have uh, input on her her costume. It was mostly my, my design and and Linda's design, um, and and it is I, I will admit like one of the more speculative um, costumes. Uh, the the her her sort of dress um, and and the profusion of of jewelry is uh, likely quite accurate. Um, the headpiece is. Uh, a more ancient version of something that is based on Ukrainian bridal headpieces uh, that are, are, are more from like the end of the early modern period into like the 19th to 20th century, you know, but we tried to create a more ancient version of that. And it's, you know, as if, you know, you, you know, as a Cirrus, she's wedded to uh, the, the gods. And then uh, the temporal rings on her headdress are again, accurate and then but then Bjork wanted a third eye and she also wanted her eyes to be concealed uh you'll notice that the women wear cowrie shell headbands uh in uh in in this particular village which is based on the kind of headgear from this uh ukrainian tribe called who are called severians they didn't call themselves that i don't we don't know what they call themselves but that's what, how we refer to them uh but i think like given where some cowrie shells are in certain burial sites we felt we could justify lowering them to to be here and that was but that was something from 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 bjork and and i think the third eye is really cool. I mean, the Viking Age is really difficult. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like handed to me, like this is what the Viking world is, so this is what you're doing. Viking architecture, which has no windows, and almost every room has a fire in the middle of the floor. What they had for buildings was great for them. They're very warm, living like hobbits, you know, just a big fire in the middle, keep everyone warm, no outlet for heat. You want to shoot a movie like it, represent that accurately, it's not camera or lighting friendly. At that time, the only light source would have been fire anyway. The choices were to, to use as fire as much as possible. You have a little window to the real thing would have been this big. We expand it to this much, but still it's three plus feet thick. So the light doesn't actually like, there's no pathway for the light to get in anywhere. So that was, you know, that was the challenge. So it was a lot of just practical stuff that was just dictated by the accuracy of depicting their way of life. It's nice having rules sometimes, like, you know, we have firelight, we have overcast, and we have sun. That's it, that's what you get. Part of what's great about trying to do this historical accurate is that you don't have to make choices. I don't have to dream about, like, how does this chair express this person's inner state? It's like, no, that's one of the few chairs from such and such burial site, just make it. That's very helpful. If you know what things are not, you know, choices get eliminated and, and the path becomes clear. The approach of trying to do something historically accurate, the great thing for me about it is that everybody knows what we're after. It's so easy to do a good job as an actor in this movie because the world is so real such detail, such care. Everything's there, you enter that world and you fall into that world. So I will say this is the first movie ever made where we can see how the Viking actually looks like. And I would like to import uh, Robert to all museums in Scandinavia because we need him. Hear me, Odin, all oh, father of the gods. Fear of a prince's vengeance quenched at the fiery gates of hell. A prince destined for Valhall. Hear me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos.